Let me tell you why you're telling me. Hello, I am Kibo. In the near future, you and I are going to be very good friends. Want to talk about it? Here is my friend, Michael Holmes. Thanks very much, Hubo. Well, have you ever wondered what your life is going to be like in the future? How robots and technology and medical miracles are going to change the way we all live? I'm Michael Holmes, here at the Esplanade in Singapore for CNN Future Summit of Man and Machine. Let's go meet both. Right now, robots can do some useful but not particularly complex things like vacuum the floor, work an assembly line, and walk and talk a little. But like the infants that they are, they're going to grow, develop new skills, and surprise us with their dexterity. I think in the next 30 years, we're going to see a transformation between the industrial sorts of robots to personal robots. What is a personal robot? An assistant? A colleague? Companion? In 20 or 30 years time, I expect we will see robots much more in the presence of human beings than they are currently. Some in the industry feel we'll reach a point when life without robots is unimaginable. The same way we regard computers and cell phones now. I've no doubt that in 20, 25 years from now, we'll have a lot of humanoid robots running around among us. And of course, we can't resist making machines in our own image. Like Repli, short for replicant, modelled after a Japanese news anchor. In an experiment, 70% of people who glimpsed Repli for just two seconds believed she was human. Even our friend Hubo has a twin, Albert. Look familiar? And why shouldn't robots imitate us? After all, we are perfect, aren't we? If we're going to start seeing robots running around with uh, personalities equivalent to human beings in, say, 15, 20 years' time, it's about time we started thinking about that now. Bye-bye. 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 It is the ultimate synthesis of man and machine. I think we are, will be putting more and more robotic technology inside us. Uh, you know, robotic joints, replacement limbs, um, a lot of people now, over 100,000, have cochlear implants with direct neural connections into their cochlea from a computer so that they can hear. Doctors using cutting-edge technology to heal. There will be a day when amputees are wired up electrically, they're wired up mechanically, and it's really a part of their body, even though aspects of the prosthesis may still be synthetic. So in that world, amputees will not only be able to walk across the sandy beach, but will actually feel the sand against their synthetic foot. And researchers using that same technology to open direct communication between the brain and computers. One of the big breakthroughs in neuroscience is that we can tap into those signals and we get many complex electrical impulses from those neurons, yet we can read out those signals and uh, by some not too complex mathematical techniques, we can put them back together in a way that we can interpret what the brain is, is trying to do. A lot of our industrial infrastructure is going to rely more on biological materials. So we're going to start building robots out of biological materials while we're putting silicon and steel inside ourselves. And then what's a robot, what's us, is going to start to get a bit messy. You're not going to be able to walk into a room in 2035 and say, okay, humans on the left side of the room, machines on the right. You'll have a hard time finding a human that doesn't have extensive amounts of technology inside them in the form of nanobots and other systems that are keeping them healthy and also extending their range of experiences and, and their intelligence. And that's certainly where we are with robots today, that there's no single application like word processing or buying online or watching videos or organizing your photos mm -hmm. that everybody says, oh, I got to have a robot. Uh, I mean, maybe that the niche of the, the Roombas is, is a tiny bit, but most of the activity is people trying out things where they themselves get hands on and do some of the programming. And uh, some of it's just, you know, fun kind of contest stuff or a toy that kind of marches around. And there's other people who are saying, okay, we can do security surveillance or we can move little packages around in uh, this nice way. And so it's one of those wonderful periods where uh, 
many, many things are being tried. So you can't predict that it's going to have the same shape uh, that PCs did, but it has a lot of the same character. Uh, and so, you know, when does the robot help in healthcare, you know, so it can move people around and help out? That's very hard. When does it really clean up your apartment? It turns out that's really a tough problem. Humans are, uh, like many things in software, when we try to match human capabilities, we, the first decade or so, we gain more respect for the incredible control system, a learning system that uh, the human brain represents. Now, it doesn't mean that we don't ever get there mm -hmm. uh, on things like uh, visual recognition, speech recognition. The progress is very, very concrete. Um, and so it'll, it'll be the same in robotics. Yeah. Now, we need to get more value added in there in terms of planning, vision, speech, uh, type things.